The first time I heard of the BBC sitcom Mrs Brown's Boys, it was rather strange because the show had become so massive and popular in such a short space of time, and yet I'd never even heard the name before. I was working on a supermarket checkout at the time, and one day I suddenly had about eight or nine people buying copies of Mrs Brown's Boys Series 3 that had just come out on DVD, and I thought, huh, what's this? I check the internet when I get home and find that it's been getting about 80 trillion viewers or something stupid like that. And yet I couldn't seem to find anyone in my social circle who watched it or had even heard of it. Therefore, I'm totally convinced that the cast members of Mrs. Brown's Boys are all aliens who've retconned themselves into our society in a research effort to find out what exactly is this thing called humour that these earthlings enjoy so much. If true, then their research efforts appear to have consisted of going into a charity shop and finding a big book of pub jokes in a bin and arranging a few random pages of it into a script. Though this is not to say that I think Mrs. Brown's Boys is particularly bad or unappealing. I mean, I went in expecting to hate it, and partly wanting to hate it because of the tax story. It would just make sense if I thought Mrs. Brown's Boys was straight up trash, snobby and indignant little Stuart Lee fanboy that I am, but it's not, alright? Okay, well it kind of is, but that's pretty much the point. For those unfamiliar, comedian Brendan O'Carroll plays a little old lady with a dirty sense of humour, Mrs Brown, and basically she interferes in her various children's lives, and that's pretty much it. The show's comprised of all the tried and tested elements that have been big staples in mainstream comedy for about as long as comedies existed. It's a sitcom about family life, it's got a man in a dress, and it's got a little old lady character making a joke that acknowledges that human sexual activity includes a process whereby a male human being inserts an engorged piece of tissue into a woman's lubricated cavity. Open brackets also made of tissue, close brackets. These are all things that have a broad appeal and have proven phenomenally successful almost every time they've been used before. While Mrs Brown's Boys was never going to wash with critics, if you do these three things and put it on TV in a prime slot, then it's pretty much guaranteed 80 trillion viewers by birthright. I mean, it's not my thing because I watch and think about comedy too much and I'm way, way too familiar with this sort of thing, but about 10, 15 years ago... Yeah, I have to admit, I probably would have watched something like this. It's essentially just this generation's Little Britain. I thought I'd have to watch at least a few episodes before I properly got the appeal of such a huge new comedy staple that I knew nothing about, but within the first five minutes of the first episode I watched, I went to myself, I bet you that at some point in this show, Mammy is going to be telling a long anecdote and the punchline is going to be, and it turns out she was masturbating him the entire time! And ten minutes later, the characters are sat around in a pub doing the exact obvious bait and switch joke that I predicted and were slapping their knees and oh my god, ha ha, isn't it funny that a little old lady character done a joke about spunking willies? Well why didn't you move? We couldn't then... move, he was using Winnie's hands! <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's cheap and predictable, but it's no more crass than anything else I've seen. I'll tell you what its sense of humour reminded me of. It's like if you've ever been to a British seaside town. In the sweet shops there, they'll sell novelty lollipops shaped like penises that people will buy and give their friends and giggle about how, ooh, look, she's inserting a phallic-shaped object into her mouth and sucking on it. Ha ha, that is rude. Mrs. Brown's Boys sort of reminded me of that kind of crass sense of humour that isn't mine, but I appreciate that it's other people's. The show's key weakness is easily the plotting. An episode will typically start by introducing a conflict in one of Mammy's children's lives for her to meddle in, and then we'll forget about that as Mammy starts telling some feedline punchline jokes about cocks or bumholes or something, and the episode sort of goes a bit all over the place from there and you'll forget what the central through line was about. Then all of a sudden everyone's in the pub telling jokes that haven't got anything to do with anything. Next scene, we're doing something completely different, and then someone remembers, oh yeah, that's what this week's plot was, and we'll return to it. It's just very messy and scattershot. It's not really a vehicle for storytelling. It just meant that episodes I watched kinda washed over me in this fuzzy and indistinct haze of sex jokes, and I was kinda struggling to remember much of it after the credits. Though I do think it's quite innovative that they leave outtakes in the broadcast version. If someone fluffs their lines, Mammy will break the fourth wall and joke about it, and everyone will chuckle along and get back into character. It helps foster a nice and friendly atmosphere. Mrs. Brown also spends quite a lot of time monologuing to the camera. Brandon O'Carroll was a stand-up for years and has a long history of stage performance, and I do think that it's quite cool that they've managed to translate the loose and improvisational feel of a stage performance into a sitcom. So, you know, that's one new thing the show has. Maybe if they had a second thing, I'd like it more. 
Then they could use as the tagline, has at least two new ideas in it. Oh my god, shut up and take my money. So, anyway, in conclusion, um, yeah, I didn't hate it, guys, sorry. I know as an online critic I'm supposed to be like your own personal attack dog when it comes to cheap and schlocky TV shows, but in my view, Mrs. Brown's Boys saw a gap in the market, filled it to the best of its ability, and helps fine by me. Yes, it's nothing new, it's ploddy and predictable, the jokes are very workmanlike, the plots are tired, played out and underdeveloped when they do come into play, but hey, it's palatable, lots of people like it, and I do see why. Anyway, to end with, I wish the people, or aliens behind it, the best of luck in continuing to assemble humorous statements regarding the process of a man inserting his engorged penis into a lady's vagina and the man and the woman proceed to engage in the process known as sexual activity until both parties achieve orgasm. And then if you turn to page 23 of your textbook for an illustrated explanation of the human reproductive system and ha ha, oh look, it is a diagram of the human penis. Ha 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 ha, isn't that amusing, viewers? Please begin to display an amused response now. Look at it, viewers. Look at it. Isn't it funny? Laugh at the funny penis, Earthlings! Laugh, damn it!